Okay, sorry. Um, so first of all, just a, a quick check up here. Now on, um, I, I realized um, when I was posting the the lecture videos for um, lecture three, which was the photoelectric effect, um, we, I went over four, actually, maybe I'll just, I'll explain real quickly what the correction I needed to make was. Um, I was considering re-recording the, the video, which I still might, uh, just because it was a pretty flagrant violation of the, the correctness. So, um, Basically, back to lecture three stands for the photoelectric effect. Uh, I'm gonna need to find a marker too. So basically, I the way that I explained it was a little bit clumsy. There were in fact um, two dependent, uh, sorry, two independent variables, things that we control, and then two separate outputs, two dependent variables are things that we measured. Um, and so what I wanted to rephrase here, I want to do this properly. Um, on this axis, we're measuring the frequency. That's the dependent variable for the first two set of, of, of measurements. And then the independent thing that we measured in the first case was the current. Um, and then in the second case was the energy per electron. Um, so, and if you haven't gone back and watched this video, um, basically when you watch the, the first uh, results video, this will make sense here. So I just want to correct myself on this. Um, the, the things that we get, and I'll explain it in the video, um, in this case here, the, we got, as we started the frequency, we got more and more current after some amount of time. Actually, I should write that as current here. So there was a critical frequency. And um, in this case here, the energy per electron um, was, let's see, I'm sorry, that was wrong. This was what I had done mistakenly wrong. This is what it looks like. We hit a certain critical frequency and we keep changing that frequency and the current stays the same. This is the difference there. That's a fairly flagrant violation. That's the same critical frequency. The second two set of graphs, what we did here was we measured, we changed the intensity of light. So that's what capital I indicates here. And we measured the same outputs, the current, and we also looked at the energy per electron. So this is, we held for this case here, we held the intensity constant and we changed the frequency and it's the opposite here we hold the frequency constant at ab above that critical frequency. And we measure the output if we change the intensity of the light. And in this case here, as long as we're above that critical frequency, the measurements we got were this. And if we keep that frequency the same, this. So that's what those graphs should look like there. Um, and then I think for the most part, my explanations based on them were correct, except they wouldn't have made sense based on the graphs that I had drawn. So I, I, I don't formally retract my position or anything, but I do retract my statements. So 